Join me on a three-night, four-day trip to Busan, Daegu, and Andong. This was the ocean view from my Airbnb bedroom in Busan. I loved being right in front of Gwanli Beach. Daejugukbap is one of the most popular dishes to try in Busan. It's a hot soup with pork and rice. This is a popular restaurant that my friend recommended. The broth is really clean and flavorful. Try some cold bakoli, rice wine, with the hot soup. There are many cafes with nice views along Gwanganli Beach. It was a bit drizzly, but still nice to have coffee here. The beaches are festive and packed with people in the summer. You can have a quieter, less crowded experience in the spring. This was my first time visiting Busan alone and it was relaxing. I had dinner with a former colleague who now lives in Busan. We had this delicious wood-fired pizza and locally brewed beer. After two nights in Busan, I headed to Daegu for the first time. I visited because I have two friends living there now. Daegu isn't that well known, but it's an interesting city to visit. I had lunch with a friend who moved to Daegu from Seoul. We had fried peppers, buckwheat noodles with octopus and this Michael fried rice served in a cute Le Creuset pot. This restaurant is a one-minute walk from Chungangno Station. The cuisine seems to be modern Korean food with some traditional touches. Daegu is known for its cute dessert cafes. This one had good coffee and it's known for its vegan baked goods. Since I was going to Andong early the next morning by bus, I booked this Airbnb near the subway station for one night. It was minimalistic and had everything I needed for a short stay. Airbnb stays can be a hit or miss depending on the host, but luckily this was a very clean and well-run studio. The next day, my friend and I took a bus from Daegu to Andong, and a taxi to get from Andong station to Bungjongsa. We got our tickets, 2,000 won each, and walked to the temple. One tip is to book early if you want to do a temple stay here. We tried to book at the last minute and they were full. Bungjongsa is one of seven Buddhist mountain monasteries in Korea that are included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. The oldest wooden building in Korea, Gungnakjeon, is here. Be sure to check it out when you visit. We went up the stairs to the Yongsanam Hermitage, where you can see a very special garden. As you can see, some of the buildings were undergoing work. But we could still appreciate the garden and the ancient tree. Can you see the faint image of the tiger? There was beautiful artwork on the walls inside. The friendly taxi driver who took us to Andong Hawe Folk Village walked us over to his favorite restaurant that he recommended. Try the Andong Jimtak, steamed chicken, and Kan Godungo, salted mackerel. Many restaurants have set menus featuring both dishes because they're both so popular. It's really good with plain white rice. Andong Jimdak is made with a yummy soy sauce base. You can rent traditional Korean clothing, hanbok here. One outfit rental costs 25,000 won, mobile payments only, and it's an unmanned store, so call the number on the front door, and the owner will give you instructions for entering and renting an outfit. Next, we 
visited Hawe Village, a traditional clan village. Members of the Pungsam Yu clan still live here, and you can see well-preserved architecture and customs from the Joseon period. Queen Elizabeth made a historic visit to this village in 1999. The village is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You can imagine what it was like to live here in the past. Traditional rope swings are set up for visitors to try. Traditionally, people would swing on the ropes while standing. I'm not sure if this was a real wedding or a reenactment, but it was fun to watch this traditional wedding procession. Pyeongsan Sewon is a famous Confucian academy that was founded by the Pungsan Yu family. These Confucian academies were places to educate scholars. It would be amazing to study in such an idyllic environment. This is a really nice spot to take photos. Afterwards, we went to this pretty cafe by the Nakdong River. Like many cafes around here, it has a traditional Hanok design. We had strawberry milk and a mugwort rice cake shake. We walked across the river to head to dinner. We went to a restaurant known for Andong Kari. The beef is local Korean beef and very fresh, and it's grilled over charcoal for a perfect barbecue taste. After dinner, my friends took a one and a half hour bus ride back to Taegu, and I took a two hour KTX up to Seoul, arriving late at night. If you're in Korea, Andong is definitely worth the day trip.